AI is the dude that called me a killer. He's like, you're just like me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a wrap. At one point, the best players wouldn't even look me in my eye. They already knew a 30 piece was coming. Right. I, I was on one leg at 5'9 in the best league in the world. Like, I I was in a lose lose, killer. Yeah. You gotta be special every time you touch the floor being small. I just know if somebody give me a chance, I'm, I'm taking it running with it. Welcome back to Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, 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 whoop. As you can see, we're on location out here in Tacoma, Pacific Northwest. We had to pull up on the Zeke end. We got a special guest with us. Isaiah Thomas, what's going on with you, bro? Nothing much. Appreciate y'all pulling up. Showing love no to doubt. the city. No, problem, no, no doubt. problem, no doubt. No doubt. We, got that, we got that budget. You know, we got, we got, that, we got that big money. We can fly. <laughs> we can get places. They try to slash you all Yeah. I had to use my, my mileage and my points, but it's oh, yeah. all good. I have a fan. I have a point. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Damn, it's okay. Whoa, whoa, look, whoa, whoa. It's okay. A little whoa, whoa. But look, man, you got, you got this two-day event going on. Coming up, a tough loss today. Saw the video, saw the play, you got fouled. We had to watch in the slow-mo, a couple different angles. This is your event. If you're not getting called at your event, who getting fired? I don't know, that ref? Okay. <laughs> Coming back next year. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> he should have called that off the strength, though. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. You guys are looking like, I know who we get it. <laughs> Cause we talk about it all the time back at AAU, they was calling, you know, you had teams paying right? They, they oh, were calling, sure. nothing was ever called fair, so you can't get done like that Especially at your own event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. One summer. Yeah. yeah. Y'all came yeah. out, yeah. came out yeah. the same year, right? No, they was doing something. You know, Pat Barrett, you know, <laughs> paying the rest. He said y'all was cheating. They was doing something. They didn't lose one game all summer. Uh, you know, yeah, you had, had them in motion like that, but we're here at the Zeke and Man's eighth annual installation or event. What does it mean to you to be able to get back to the local basketball community with an event of this magnitude? Man, it's, it's just super dope for me because first off, we don't have the Sonics no more. So like these kids in the community don't even get to, get to be able to see NBA players. So the biggest thing for me was like, let me try to do something that can bring NBA players to the city so these kids can just interact with them, see them, take pictures with them. And it's, it's probably gotten bigger than I ever thought it was. At first it was just, you know, a, a local hood tournament really. And then now it's just become bigger where all the local NBA guys come in. I fly guys, we got you you guys here. Mm -hmm. Like this, this is bigger than I thought it would be. So it's just dope that the kids can see it. And cause I remember when I was a kid, seeing my first NBA player, that made my dream that much more real. Yeah. So to be able to do that to the, to the community is everything for me. So I remember back in the day, everybody thinks about Sonic, they think about Seattle, but they were also playing in the Tacoma Dome back yeah. in the day, which is about a couple miles away from here. Did you ever go up there and check them out? When you I were? didn't. I did. My first game was after they played in Tacoma okay. Dome. 1997, I went to go see Stephon Marbury okay. and Kevin G K KG. So that was like my first interaction seeing NBA players live. So when we talk about Seattle, Tacoma area, just the amount of pros y'all produce. I mean, y'all got just, yeah. just hoopers coming out of here. So what makes this area such a, a hoop pop at? I think it starts with, you know, the older guys. Like, it started with Doug Christie. He kind of laid the foundation. And, like, guys like Jason Terry and Jamal Crawford. I remember when I first met those guys, Jason and Jamal, they like, what we do for you, you, you need to do for the next guys coming up. And it's like a brotherhood out here. Like, all the guys come to this event. If Jamal got his event, his pro-am, everybody's going to that. If somebody got a backpack giveaway, everybody's showing up to that. That's just you know, the culture of this city is like a real brotherhood where everybody kind of supports everybody. And it's not like, you know, how athletes be, it's somewhat of a competition. Like who got the most money, who got this and that. And in LA, like in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how do they, like, but how it, do they get like that? Is it because of the city's not a big city, I, I big think town? just because, I mean, the older guys, like, mm -hmm. like I said, Doug Christie, Jamal Crawford, those guys laid the foundation of just not competing and coming together. So every city event, everybody be there. And it, and it just be love and, and support. And, you know, obviously it's not like that everywhere around the country, but it's been like that since I was a kid here. Wait, Luke Rittner is from here, right? Yeah, and you yeah, see him yeah. every now no, and then. No, that's what I said. So that was my roommate. That was my roommate in uh, like pump camps. Yeah. Right, so he used to he used to tell me, I'm like, man, ain't no goddamn ballers out there. Crazy. Right, but, but man, this is the biggest shit. Come on. This, this is, is a big event. No, this, this is a big event. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. impressed. <laughs> like, I'm right, impressed. this is yeah, a big yeah, event. Sure. Like, yeah. I was like, damn, how many years have you been doing this? It, it, it's just been getting bigger and better. And I, like, the, obviously, the, the, the support from the community is everything. Without them, it wouldn't even be cracking like this. Yeah. I want to say something. So I go to a lot of pro-ams, a lot of summer leagues and things like that, and you see NBA players, and a lot of them are 
hands off. Like yeah. they're not even wanting the fans and the crowd to mm -hmm. touch them. These guys are just walking around here, shaking hands, taking pictures. Even even yeah. our guys here, like it just feels like home. It feels comfortable. How long did it take for it to get like that? Or was it like that from the beginning? I mean, it was like that from the jump. Really? Because it's just how the NBA guys interact with everybody. It was like nobody was too cool. Like we had D Rose, D Rose pull up a, a few years ago, like, and he was just so cool to everybody. Like, and it was just normal. He didn't, he took pic every picture, every autograph. So whoever has came has just showed the most love and it's been, it's been super dope to see it. Cause you know, you get some athletes that somewhat are assholes. Don't yeah. want don't take no pictures, interact with no kids. We haven't had that yet. So it's been dope. Yeah. And I don't think they can do that here. Tacoma, you know, we in the hood. So, you know. Yeah. You, DJ, you know, let me know where I'm You ran out, you do yeah. some yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You do some yeah. shit yeah. like yeah. that. You do some weird shit. You go, yeah. 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 all right, all right, cuz. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. 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 Yo, I start right. walking out right. there. They play some West Coast music. Yeah. BJ yeah. said, yo, chill. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. You trying to get y'all said, yo, chill, chill, chill. It's so funny. There's so many NBA, even players that's like on benches. It's hard to be bougie when there's so many other players in here exactly. just being natural, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, you got so many. Like, there was kids on the bench like, wait, aren't you Toronto, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And even B-Roy came. Yeah, B-Roy yeah. 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 don't go anywhere yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. like, to see him interact with the kids, that's, man, that's love. I can't thank those guys enough. Because, like, I, I looked up to those guys and I went to their events. So, for them to return the favor is everything for me. So, we got three former NBA players here on the show. Mr. B right here was out there cooking at Steph Curry camp. You gonna play in the Zeke in? What's up? Come on. I mean, I might we need get out you to our city. I get out there tomorrow. We need to put the Bills Arena team in here we next got, year. Come you know on. we got 15 jerseys. Okay. And they say tough crowd on them. What's up? Okay. Hey, you got, What's hey, up? You got bulletproof. You got bulletproof. What's up? We need you. Come on. Get out there. It's the people out here that need their dreams killed. Oh, they need their dreams no, killed. All you have to just tell them Murray said he can score on you. You know, he'll be like, what? He got the shoes. He got the shoes. Yeah, I said he got the sneakers. He got the shoes. He never went basketball. He was ready. I know he got a shirt. I seen him on the wall. Yeah, no, he got a shirt. That's a real hooper. He over there sitting like, yeah, all right. I'm I Minding my business, man. Yeah. Minding my business. They need some dreams killed out here. We need that. We need that. Somebody needs you to pull up. No, no. Someone asked me a question. This. Someone asked me we a question. Like, yeah, you think you get out. Stop. <laughs> the way these knees work. Nope. Like, I can stay on offense. I can't get back on defense. Mm. No, nobody's playing. Nobody playing. Play 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 so, you, I mean, you talk about this event, but you talk about all the guys that come back and the love and respect they have from each other. But that shit kind of goes out the window when they get on the court. We think about DeJounte last year with oh, Paolo. But they dudes going out. So, how competitive are y'all? I know it's all love, you know, from Doug Christie, Jamal, all the way down. But y'all want to bust each other's ass when y'all get yeah. out here on the court. It's, so bragging, how, it's bragging rights. It's bragging rights for the city. Like, and that's all it is. That's why it's. When we do compete and do get on the court, you know, I, I'm not fucking with baby boy. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not being cool with none of them once we once we get on the court. And that's just how it is. And I think that's what's built who we are. Like we compete, whether it's open gym, Jamal's pro am, whether it's this weekend, and then you get bragging rights. You know, you talk shit the rest of the year yeah. until it comes back around. So we always talk about L.A., New York, Texas having the best hoopers. Everybody knows it's LA, everybody else is kind of a distant second. But where, where <laughs> yeah. is Seattle, Tacoma area? Where do y'all rank amongst that crew? Because I don't, I don't feel like y'all get the love that y'all deserve for what you guys have contributed to the game. I, I mean, I can't put a number on it, but we compete with anybody. They we definitely, they definitely the top five. They, they, wait, you said something, they said they smacked LA? Yeah, y'all yeah, smacked LA at, um, at, 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 at the uh, at Jamal thing. Nah, they could get it if they wanted. Like, I mean, but I, but I mean, but no, I ain't we can do that for sure. No, I mean, I but I ain't play that game. No, I was you saying, I, no, I was saying this. I said, Let's man, with so many like weekends, there should be like at the end of the summer before the season start, like a like a world, like a. I think world. they tried it before. Calendar. They tried it, but not with like elite level dudes. Like the New York, yeah. LA, like well, the Drew League has one. That first but it's like Drew League, league but no, nah, it's Drew League versus somebody. It's not all. Yeah, they did one like. It's Miami, New York, Chicago, uh, Philly. Uh, there's all the different cities. 
They come out, but it's at the yeah. beginning. But it's yeah, not like week, it's yeah. not like the lockout so 2011 yeah, when yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, you looking for that. Yeah, you looking for that. Yeah, that was different. It's too many cameras now. Nobody wants action like that. Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. That's action though. That's action though. That's the lockout. That lockout. That's September first action. Yeah, you go viral in it for the wrong shit. Yeah, no, that lockout. Right before the season starts too. You know, that's why you don't see that. I believe everybody don't want that. Everybody don't want to be in in the inner cities and and play in minutes. It's a different type of. That's why I try to select the guys that I bring that really love hoop. Yeah. Because you can't just bring anybody to this. Yeah. Even yeah. a star in the NBA might get embarrassed. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Some like I mean, as y'all know, like well, so I was I was I used to play, right? And I, I used to just watch. I remember it's Frank Frank Nitty, right? <laughs> so I'm warming up, you know, he looked down on the other side. So you just got somebody looking at me. So I'm watching his temperature. And I'm like, oh, he gotta be good. He right? gotta <laughs> And I was like, yo, who's young fella? I said, like Frank, you gotta watch out for him. Oh, I bet. So I stretched. All right, man. Because, you know, we, we start off the game trying to get a feel <laughs> yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. No, no, bring it down here. All right, all right look. Yeah, yeah. I just, I got to see, I got to go ahead and check your show. Sure. Or because when I start watching, I'm like, oh, yeah, he would have gave me all. Oh, yeah. From the job. If you hadn't uh, checked it. And I, yeah, if I want to look back yeah. and see yeah, him, yeah. I was just staring, just eyeballing me like, wait, hold on, right. young fella. Yeah. Who are you? And the crowd would have been active. The crowd would have been active. So when we talk about all the great players that have come out of here, in your opinion, who's the best player that you've seen? The best player, I mean, you got to go with Jamal Crawford. Okay. I think, like, Paolo ben- Banchero got a chance okay. to be the greatest mm-hmm. from here, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but I think, mm-hmm. shit, Maul played 20 years in the league. Yeah. Three times, six man. Like, Jason Terry's won. He won six man of the year, won a championship. Yeah. Like, if B-Roy didn't get hurt, I feel like he probably mm-hmm. would have been the greatest for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm always gonna, you know, I'm always gonna give Jamal his flowers. Like he laid the foundation for most of these, for me and most of the younger guys coming up. So that he, he's the code around. If it was a one-on-one tournament, hey. you know, one-on-one, 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 nobody's fucking with me. Okay, I go that one-on-one <laughs> tournament. Everybody yeah, held me. Really. Everybody in there like that 27, 28 age. Oh yeah, it's on the Everybody okay. at that peak, injury free, one on one term. You say you beat B Roy, you beat Jamal, you beat everybody. I like it. I like yeah, it. That's like what we're here for. for so, All due respect too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No res- I'm serving. Them. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of NBA players, uh, overseas pro, all that. Can you shout out some of the guys that are pro that come into this tournament every year and cook, and people are just like, "Yo, um, who is that?" Yeah, you got you got a lot of overseas guys. You got um, Abdul Gaddy. He was a McDonald's All American mm-hmm. from Tacoma, Washington. Andrew Andrews played at UW, um, Pac-10 Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. Plays overseas. On my team, you got Craig Randall. He he served the Suns in preseason last year. Okay. 30. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a lot of guys. Like, it's just not, obviously, the names are the NBA guys. Right. Yeah. But throughout every team, it's it's about five or six overseas guys. They, oh, okay. they, make, they make the tournament more competitive. Right. Obviously, yeah. you got the NBA guys, but those are the type of guys that they make a name in this. Mm-hmm. Bro, y'all had a stretch of U-Dub all the way from, like, B-Roy, Trey Simmons, that crew, all the way to yourself where yeah. – just killers. Lorenzo Romar was kind of doing his thing out here, man. So I always just had the utmost respect Lorenzo for y'all. Romar, yeah. Yeah, you, like, but he got NBA, he got guys in the NBA for sure. It'd be some years y'all start nasty, then rattle off like oh, 10, 12 straight. Yeah. I mean, it'd just be shit. Like, but every year you know when you was coming up here, you was gonna get a battle on the competition. Like, we, should, we, had, we got Mark, Markel Fox too. Yeah, yeah. Like, we got sneaky oh. number one picks. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you talked about Paolo. Is he the guy, the young guy that you're most excited about? He's the guy kind of, that gets it. Okay. Like he gets it in every way possible. Like, he wants to learn. He's asking questions. He doesn't know how good he is yet, and that's the dope thing about him. Like, he's he's just a sponge. Like, he's always texting, asking some questions about how to get better. And then he don't got no ego either. Like, he's the number one pick, rookie of the year. You think he'll come in, like, with his chest out? He's like, nah. Like, he's going to pay homage to everybody before him. And that's what's super dope about him. Like, he's he's at USA right now, or he'll be here yeah. for sure. So is he sending you during the season? He's asking you questions. All of that. What kind he's of stuff is he ball. asking? He just how do you like like the tough stretches as a rookie, as you know, yeah, like rookie ball. You can't figure that out. Like you you need help. You need you need guidance in that. And he's the one that will reach out, text. How do you like? What do I gotta do? I'm struggling with my jump shot. What do I gotta do? Like he does it to everybody. So it's it's super dope to see how talented he is. And you know the young guys don't really listen to nobody no more. No, so it's like yeah, yeah, they're not. They're not asking questions. They already think they're better than you, like all of that. And he's, he got a good, like vibe to him. That's why I think he's gonna be the dopest to come out of here. Can I? 
<laughs> but you know this is a communal. May I? Show. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Community. May I? I brought flowers to the. I brought flowers to the conversation, oh, so I want to. I want to be able to do what I don't know if anybody has done for you yet, but on the open platform, give you your flowers from you dub up until you know the point where you had to exit, right? You know, just as a hooper, somebody that's a student of the game, right? You know, when you was in SAC, because I played in SAC and I know how the energy was there, and you've been able to get along with guys and not get along with guys because you have the passion of the guy like me, guys like Kobe, you know what I'm saying? That no nonsense, I don't want no bullshit. I want to play ball, right? And I think throughout your career, a lot of us, a lot of those things been misunderstood about you, you know, because your passion is so high and the leadership qualities of you is of the greats. And then you go to Boston, right? Those three years you did in Boston, bro, like we're talking about Hall of Fame type yeah. shit, bro, yeah. for, for the size and, and your ability has always been overlooked as far as the skill set, what you really do to the game, how you've challenged guys who are considered greats now can't really fuck with you, can't never could fuck with you, and really not really vouching for you to get in the league. Like, you would expect the brotherhood to be that tight. Like, yo, we got a chance to get Isaiah on our team. Why we ain't moving the, the needle for it? So I think, like, I've always wanted to give you your flowers because I felt like you was a high IQ player, high skill player. You never got to just do. But to see the weekend, to see the respect you get for your community, and to not be in the league right now as a big vet, as a big homie, is uh, as a fan of yours, demoralizing. But also as a student of the game, I know that you you still gonna keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? And still give back the way you do. But uh, I just wanted the people to know because a lot of kids don't be knowing. Yeah. They don't be going yeah. back and being like, oh, Steph and this, and then you know. Um, Whoever the young guys is out there hooping, they be like, oh, he got this. It's like, bro, did you not know that this is one of the dudes that was giving niggas like Steph <laughs> like buckets? He averaged 29, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the same thing I try to do with Gil. It's like those three years that he did was so crazy. And it's like, you don't give enough flowers to a guy like both of y'all where it's like, they need to go back and watch shit. I appreciate that. Especially coming from you, that shit means that means the world, you know, your peers are, are what's most important. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like the thoughts of your, you know, the thoughts of your peers is everything. So to hear that from you, a guy, I looked up to you, I looked up to you. Like, you jump off the right foot, dunk in North <laughs> USC. Like, I, I, I seen all that. And like you said, I'm a student of the game. So I'm going to always pay homage to the guys that did it before me. And that, that shit means a lot because you don't hear that all the time. You don't hear guys showing super love like that, especially who did it before you. Nah. Yeah, I, remember I, I watched the even we, we talked mm -hmm. in um what was that two years ago yeah in la it was in la it was, it was at mamba That's so look i I, I i yeah yeah i so you played against the wizards mm -hmm. that that was that, that yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> so that was that 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 takeoff that know. takeoff uh playoff so uh so they were uh so he was with the wizards too in that summer so it was basically the wizards versus with the nets yeah katie yeah, yeah so katie Kyrie, john wall yeah. everybody was there and you know, I'm just watching back and forth, and I'm like, "Go, do you, right?" I'm like, "I know what you. I've seen what you do, and watching it there, it seemed like it was more mental mm -hmm. than the physical." Because that was when I was, you know, that I was just coming back off the surgery, so mm -hmm. like, that was my big, my first time really playing with those type of dudes again. Yeah, yeah. So, in that setting, you know, I'm trying to let the game come to me, not even thinking who the fuck I really am, and he was like. Turn that shit Turn up. up. And it just clicked. Like hearing that from, you know, somebody like him that I looked up to, wanted to be like, it was just like this. That's like that's like Kobe Bryant or AI saying, You're cold. Turn up. Yeah, I think and so. when they said that, it was like it was say no more. Yeah, because sometimes I, I, when we come off of injuries, right, we naturally go into protection mode. Yeah. Right? Like we yeah. go into protection mode and we 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 forget what we do. Yeah. Right, and I'm sitting there like. He look at me fucking, just like that. Yeah, like, you're fucking yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't yeah. even know who he's talking to. You better get for the sure. go and get the cooking out this yeah. You know, and because you, you got Kyrie, you got John Wall, Katie's there. Like, it's really that, and that's where it's like, yo, just, this is where you test it. This is where you test, get your shit back. Because 
that, like I'm watching a physical, I'm like, okay, he's moving. So right now it's just probably just the mental part, mm-hmm. not really scared trust, to trust it because I went yeah. through it. That was it. Yeah, I, I went through it with the knee. Like I got the lane. I'm like, ah, like wide open. I'm like, ah. And I'm like, if I go in there, do I have to dunk it? And then I just like move out, for set up sure. for a jumper. And then I just see my game just drop. I want to know this though, like when you went to Cleveland and y'all had that stacked team, like what was the expectations for you in that element? Knowing that you, you know, before you was in Boston, you didn't have those type of players around. So a lot of the, the weight was on your shoulders to carry, you know, the team over top. But then you like, you with LeBron, you with D-Rose. It's like, yo. And for me, like knowing you was on that team, it's like, they got a few point guards. You know what I'm saying? But I know this nigga is the X Factor. Oh, that was that was crazy. Yeah. Like, that was, that was crazy. It was a lot. Cause you know, I was coming off injury. Like I was trying to, like I didn't have surgery yet. So like when I came back, the world expected me to average 30 again. And like, I wasn't even in the same situation. I didn't even post it. On top of it, I was really on one leg. Like, so I was in a lose-lose. Like obviously I couldn't say that. Like, I couldn't say, I'm 60%. Like I had to say I was 100%. But I was, in the, the day, I was trying to get paid. Then, like, when I came back, I was in the middle of the season. I came back in January with LeBron on the team, with D Way. Like, I never really had, I played 14 games. I never really had the time to just everything to slow down and get used to playing with stars like that. Like, I never played with a LeBron James. I never played with a Kevin Love and all them type of dudes. So, like, it was tough for me because my mind is still thinking I can go for 30. Yep. My body's like, well, you're just not there. Right. Like, there's just no way. So my mind was really fucking me over. And then the world was seeing me try to get through it. Like I, I was on one leg at 5'9 in the best league in the world. Like I I was in a lose-lose, killer. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I was fighting myself. Like I can't tell nobody that. Man. So it was tough for me. It was, t- it was dope to be around those guys and see their work ethic to see how their every day is. But it was like, I was lost mentally because I was I was still trying to play catch up. I was on the verge of signing a $200 million contract. Man. You know me like, Man. that's in the back of my mind, like all of that. So when I got out of the situation, my mind slowed down and I was able to be like, damn, I was chasing something that just really wasn't there right. at that point in time. Right. And I had no control over it. Right. So it was, it was a tough situation for me. I'm thankful that I was able to see that and be around it and be around one of the greatest to ever play. Yeah. See how he works, hell of a teammate, all those guys. I became close with D Rose, which was somebody I looked up to. So it was looking back at it now, it was I needed that, but when I was in it, it was tough as fuck. It was Do you it was, think you should have sat the rest I of I think it? I should this is what I really should have did. I should have got the surgery I got in 2020 and sat the whole year. Played the next year on a one-year deal and just showed that I was still the same. But in that setting, the surgery I needed to get, nobody got. I wasn't about to be the first one to get it. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you feel me? I was like the black when it came out. Like, like, I wasn't yeah. about to do that. Yeah. And then I needed eight to ten months. Yeah. At that point, it was like I had no time to, as a five nine dude, I had no time to sit out for eight months. Yeah. Yeah. So when the pandemic happened, I had time. That's why I got it. Because yeah. I had eight to ten months to just. Yeah. Yeah. Rehab every day, but I'm thankful for that situation. But if I did it, I wish I could go back and do it over. That's why I, I was fighting shit that I couldn't fight, like, that I couldn't win. Yeah. That's why I asked that question because, like, a lot of times we have conversations on the pod about you know the mental aspect, yeah. and we we all have given our aspect of what we went through. You know, he didn't went through. I went through micro fracture. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying B had the uh, Achilles. Yeah. So, from you as a guy who was actually more recently playing. Like these kids need to understand that the game is 90% mental. Even when you playing with superstars and you like, yo, how do I fit into this mode after being the fucking guy breaking records? And then it's like, yo, I'm only on one leg. I can't let them see at all my weakness at all. You know what I'm saying? The cameras is like, my leg don't hurt no more. I'm like, man, I can't move. It's crazy. I when I gotta go up against Westbrook and, and Curry and yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't give a damn I'm on one leg. <laughs> yeah, no. and when when I realized I was it was tough for me, the dude started picking me up full court. Oh Lord. I was they, like they, they at one point, the best players wouldn't even look me in my eye. They already knew a 30 piece was coming. Yep. 
the next year when I was hurt, it's like, I got the second string dude picking me up full. Oh, man. No disrespect, but that's when I knew. I'm like, oh, they see it too. But how hard is that for you to be at 60%? It hurts. But I'm saying, but you got to you gotta project this image. You're at 100. You got to see the way people are hating the media, fans, because they're treating it, they taking you at face value that you're at 100. It hurt every day because I'm fighting it. My my homies know I'm not I'm not me. No. Like my my family know I'm not me. But yeah. to the world, I had to like being five nine made me had to do that. Mm -hmm. If you six two, you get a little yeah. more chances. Five yeah. nine is like you yeah. can't be special. Like you're out waiting of here. for one moment. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't he, have no flaw. See, he can't you do can't. It. He can't. You got to be special every time you touch the floor. Being small, I and I wasn't that no more. Obviously, at that point. Like, it just wasn't there. Let me ask you this, because I we had this question on the show, and I don't want to say what their answer was, but I feel like you're a perfect person to answer this. The question was, if you were the last pick in the draft, which you were, right. right, would you rather get drafted by a team that you know isn't your home, or would you rather pass on that and pick as a free a undrafted player and try to pick who you want to go work out for, where you think you fit best? I, I think, like, obviously Sacramento gave me a chance. Like, it was a lockout year. I was a 60 year pick. That's unheard of. Right. I had no summer league. I remember when they called, I think the season started like December 26th. Yep, sure did, yep. You feel me? Yep, like, sure did. I went to SAC like two weeks before that. I worked out with Tiger Gavins for two weeks. He invited me. Like, and it was just, I get, like, obviously there's a lot of luck in success in the league. I had a lot of luck in that situation. Do it over again? Yeah, you would want to not get drafted and pick where you go so you can have a, you can kind of control the situation, yes. see who really wants you. Sack really gave me a chance that probably no other team would. And mm -hmm. I just took it and ran with it. Yeah. I just okay. really took every chance took I got. Advantage. Took advantage. Like, you know, they 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 dropped the Jimmer for that. I think the seventh yep. pick. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> That's wow. my like he was a good dude. But like but come on. Every practice, it was like I didn't give a fuck. Murder. Murder. Body. You know, say nothing. Dead I'll body. Listen, how do you? I'm a yeah, dead body. Yes. Every day. And it sucked because I had to I had to do it to you. <laughs> Casualties. Every Casualties day. of you war. Know, you know what's crazy? This is a story I never said. And shout out to Jimmer for that, like, hell of a dude. We had no problems. The craziest shit happened. The seventh pick, I was the 60th pick. My first All-Star year, we're doing a charity thing for All-Star. You know how All-Star, you do the charity yeah. thing. He was a G League All-Star. Mm -hmm. Like that shit, that shit, like, and it's no disrespect. Right. It just it just hit my mind like, damn, that's how, that's how the shit works. Like, yeah. that, in nobody's mind would they, they have thought the 60th pick would be an all-star and the seventh pick would be a G League all-star. Like, that's crazy. But that's how the shit be working. Yeah. It just goes. That's just how it goes. It's like, go. and I'll be trying to tell these kids that. Like, it don't matter what the fuck happens. Somebody give you a chance and yeah, you, you take advantage, you better. You better take it. And you better take, take it. Take it. Also the next 60 is coming. used to talk about next all the 60. time, like beating niggas out in practice, right? Being able to have the opportunity because now they don't practice as much. You're not practicing, so you don't even get a chance. So we, we was practicing. Yes. So it was like, this, Come is, my, here. this is my game. Come here. So funny, I, used I, to love I, should, I should have your story too. Because I've I, 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 I heard had, your story. I had, three, yeah. I had two knee surgeries going into a contract year. Right, so I'm going into a contract year, so I'm not playing. Right, the doctors already told him that he ain't gonna be the same. Right, he ain't gonna be the same. So I came back last two games of the season. Right, <laughs> all right, cool, <laughs> I'm done. Right, so me going into negotiations, somebody said, "Why are you opting out?" And I said, "If I stay the next year, I'm I'm afraid my career is over." For sure. Like I know how I know how this feels. My career might be over, so I need to opt out right now and secure the bag, right? So I opted out. I remember um, Baron Davis actually helped me. Baron Davis actually helped me low key. So Baron opts out of his deal, right, to go to uh, uh, Clippers. Mm -hmm. So Golden State calls me and says, "Hey, we got the max for you, yeah, one on one." So as soon as they said that, I was like. Lord, right? Because I'm, I'm working. Yeah, I'm like, and you this, know that's her. At this, point, listen, at this point, I got shit. I got what, like 13 left, and they gave me 30. I was like, cool she shit, 32. Right? I'm good. <laughs> I need to get the extra because I, I can see how I can fill it. Sure. Yeah. And um, so when I went into the mean shit, so they sent me the 80. I was like, no, 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 I don't need that. Uh, good, that's good though, right? Um, Baron Davis just opted out. Golden State already offered me a max. So I said, all right, I'm out. Right, left. 
And then the owner called me and said, listen, I don't give a fuck what they saying. You my guy. You, you've been good to me. Um, the money's yours, whatever you want. That's love. That's the That's only love. reason is because I had a relationship with the owner. Mm-hmm. And he didn't, he's like, you did your part already. I'm paying you for what you already did. I don't give a shit what you did. Right? <laughs> but you yes. know what I mean? So I tell, I tell players, man, listen, there's GMs, there's presidents. Fuck them. Right? Talk to that man. To that because from there, it's just you meet. That's right. You're right? You to. meet. Like you, I mean, your story, that resonates with the owner. General manager's looking at paperwork. Yep. That owner, like, hey, listen, I know he, he just... For sure. I love you, my God. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's like they they human, man. Mm-hmm. I, and I tell people, man, listen, go talk to the people who who write the check. Exactly. Get to them. Get to them. Yes. But I, I, I that game. But I listen, if I wouldn't have if I would have if I would have stayed in that contract, but my career was over. I, I think you can see what happened after that. <laughs> Get the bag. <laughs> you can see what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Gun, all that, all that. <laughs> <laughs> It was downhill after that. <laughs> so we saw flashes of what you could do in 2022. Uh, you didn't play last year. You said you want to make a comeback 2023, 2024. How's your health doing now? How's the body? How's everything feeling right so now? Like health is 100%. Like, I have no... Like, but it's a real 100. It's not 100. Yeah, this ain't okay. no... Like, it's not the 1600. Right. That's, okay. that's why for three years I was, I was, I was lying to y'all. <laughs> and I was hurt. Take the man at his word yeah, now. I, I've been good. I have, I have no problems with my hip. Is when, when I was on the Hornets... When I was anywhere, signed in 10 days, they seen it. Like, the health is not even a question. This is just, really, will somebody give me an opportunity, obviously? Like, I'm staying ready. I'm only 34 years old. Like, I really haven't had a lot of pounding in the last three or four years. So I'm really a little younger than, mm-hmm. than, the, the, than the numbers. So I'm just ready. Like, I had a workout in July in front of at least, like, 20 teams. So they seen it, you know? So I'm just staying ready, staying confident. You know what the, just from the optics, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look and be exactly what they remember. Exactly. Right? You can't be 34. You can't. Mm-hmm. You got to be 22. You okay. can't. Right? Um, I remember someone asked me, like, man, I'm trying to get back in the league. What should I do? And I'm looking, I said, you, you look exactly how I look right now. Right? <laughs> right? I know you're trying to get, I said, when you're trying to make an impression on someone, right? They need to do this. Man, oh shit! They need to do that. Oh shit! What you been? What you been doing? You, been you know they start. Yeah. Hey, you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah. you know they start doing this right. They start touching the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see. So those one of those things, man. Where it's like when you when you make that appear, when they see you again, you already won them over with your look. Being rusty, that's normal. This and and it's like in in. In general managers and coaches' mind, they think losing weight is the hardest part, yeah. right? Versus the timing. So if you if you beat him in like I'm shredded, I look great. The timing, like oh, I'm I'm signing you off your look. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, off your look. You know, I'm signing you off your look. We'll work on the yeah, timing. We, yeah. They is, think it's harder to work on the weight for some reason. Is, is there any? I don't like to put this energy in the room, but let's just say an NBA team doesn't pick you up. Are you open to going overseas? Like, what are the other options or things that you want I mean, to do? At this to point, your obviously, that's an option. Like, I, I I got a lot of offers overseas. I just, you know, my ultimate goal is the league. Like, I I played 11 years in the league. My kids are a little older, so like going overseas would be tough. But I'm not throwing that option out the window. I know okay. there's bread over there too, and I yeah. know there there's a high level of basketball over there too. It's just right now, I, I feel like I I, I still got a chance to to get back on the NBA roster. And then when that's, when teams aren't calling or talking to me and that window's done, yeah, I'm, I, I shoot overseas. Cause I love the game. I want to hope that they want to play. Yeah, yes. want to hope. China's the better option, right? Going to China because their season's done. Oh, that's that's the, yeah, I think it's China. January. Yeah, season in yeah, January, yeah, right? Yeah, when I went to China for three months, that's how I got back in the league. Yeah. It's just because I was, they give you the ball every day. You're just scoring. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you, 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 you just, you just, just like, yeah, yeah, you're getting your, you're getting your rhythm back. And then, and then All Star Weekend when it's time for you to go, that's where you come back. Oh shit! Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. You come back. Yeah, you come back. Exactly. So that's definitely an option. I'm not, I'm not like my ego and pride doesn't take away from that at all. But you know, my ultimate goal, I feel like, is my. If my mind's somewhere else, that takes away from what right. I'm really trying yeah. to get at. Right, right. Yeah. So when you think about like workouts, you know, I, I think you work out with Joe, right? Mm-hmm. Bizarre, right? So Joe's workouts are catered to repetition and 
getting the rust off, making sure you look sharp, right? But then it's like a lot of times when at this age, they just want to see if you can still play, yeah. right? It's like, where's the tape? Can exactly. we see you hooping? Can you guard mm -hmm. the guards at this speed? Can you, you know, mm -hmm. do you still got the rotation? No, the, and, uh, you know, we don't lose the IQ of the game, yeah, yeah. never that. But it's usually now, especially now in 2023, these GMs, these scouts, they're like, but can he play? Can he, play? Can he still who can, can he get crazy? along like with you teammates? Say that, like when I worked out last month, I thought it was gonna be like drills. It was like they wanted to see. So, you play. so we played fours or fives, four courts, five games. Served them. Yep. So like they seen it. And I and I get that obviously as you get older, the drill should go out the window. Like yeah. you gotta see if you can stay in front of them, do it if your moves still work. So I get that, but it's they seen I'm still the same. Exact right. same. Exactly. No, no way around it. Fire. So last question for you. Underdog coming out of high school, I remember I was doing an interview with Brandon on another project. I just started scrolling through the rankings. Mm -hmm. Just keep scrolling down. I'm like, let me see if anybody in here, you know, ended up doing something. Stumble. I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? But underdog coming out of high school, fine nine. Do your thing in college. Underdog coming into the league, last pick. And now here you are, kind of finding yourself in another position as an underdog. What still keeps you motivated in terms of just showing people what you can do out there? I mean, I'm I'm motivated by the process. Like I'm 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 fine with however long it takes. I'm fine with however hard it is. Like, it's it's all good. Um, that's just been my life. Like I've been doubted my whole life. I've been having to play the prove game my whole life. So it's like, I think if it was something new to me, like it would be hard to do. It's just like, it's just another stepping stone I gotta get over. And it's always been like that. So it's, it is what it is. I'm fine with the process. I'm fine with however long it takes. I just know if somebody give me a chance, I'm. I'm taking it running with you. You know that that the year you averaged 29. <laughs> <laughs> he always go to the points. <laughs> no, because no, no, do you think for guards, what is that rank of just being in like 29, right? That's impressive, right? Like average 29. But it seems like at 5'9, right, to do it how you did it. That has to be ranked one, two, I mean, three every night, ever. Every night. Like I'm yeah. sorry. Like I mean, yeah, if you take five nine out of it, it's top ten, right? Yeah. When you add five nine, like because Iverson's taller, but Iverson's at the two. To be a point that really just dominated a game, where do you rank that season for guard play? Man, that season, I just like all due respect, all respect to Westbrook too. If he didn't average a triple double, I probably would have got MVP. Yes. Yeah. At five nine, he was the first. He was the first player to average yeah. triple since Oscar Robertson. Yeah. My team it. was number two in the league. He ruined it. I averaged twenty nine mm -hmm. at five nine. Like <laughs> your team sucked too. <laughs> like I, I no, I'm but, just gonna be yeah, honest, man. But, because I'm, even though Jason Tatum and that's them now, that was not them then. Right. Right. I mean, I definitely had all role players. It just it was kind of like AI's two thousand one team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they complimented. What I didn't yeah. do, and I helped them what they couldn't do. Like it was exactly like that. Yeah. Don't go into the but that that ranks. I mean, to me, no other Is small dude it? ever does. That's, that's, other than AI. So see, someone asked me. And like, if you look at it, because obviously I'm I was in it, but out of all starting point guards, I averaged the least amount of point. I mean, the least amount of minutes mm -hmm. out of every starting point guard that year. And it wasn't like it was ISO ball. Like, it was real hoop. Oh, no, up. it was like, real, it was it was the real hoop. Yeah. That yeah. Brass and, I, and you know what it was? Like, I just figured it out. Like, I fit, it was to a point, like, I knew next year I was going to average 34. Like, that mm. was the goal. Yeah. Mm. Like, I knew if I didn't get injured, I knew it because I figured the game out. Like, and the fear factor of how the people I used to look up to on TV, how they just didn't really want no action no more. <laughs> so every night, I was like, it was mental at that point, like you said. Yeah. I just knew I was getting 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. People don't realize. See, this is why hoopers sound better than, than people on TV. Yep. You, say, you said it, right? You coming on the court and you looking at people that they, they're considered Hall of Fame. Damn. Sitting there. They knew it was Putting the heads down. <laughs> and then, right. at that point, it was like some Kobe shit. I was looking to see if the nigga would look at me. Yeah. <laughs> and once he did, I'm like, oh, it's cool. That's all it's good. Man, people don't under people don't it was understand. All, that. I promise you, every that year, it was once I seen it and figured the game out. My whole thing was look, I had 12 at halftime, 20 by the end of the third. 
I might have the dub in the fourth. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Depending on how I feel. Mm. I'm gonna get the 30. I'm gonna get the 28 to 30. Mm -hmm. If I had 20 going into the fourth, I was going for 35. Yep. Mm. I figured the game out. Yep. And number? then the next year it was like they were shooting more threes. The next year it was like I was gonna average 35. Yep. I only shot like seven threes a game. 33 minutes. Just just now. just just let me shoot 12 threes a game. Mm. So, so, so you basically you and AI. Yeah, they it was calling been, him the little you and AI. You and Boston. <laughs> so that's what they were calling. I, it's the AI, leprechaun. and I'm putting me right behind. Right behind. For and the before best. that year, I, AI is the dude that called me a killer. He's like, you're just like me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a wrap. <laughs> let me add this to it. Um, this is my last little question, because you're a Kobe guy. I'm a Kobe guy. Kobe taught me the method of scoring per quarter, three buckets a quarter. Bang, 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 bang. But if you can get four buckets a quarter, oh, oh Lord, it's a, it's a good night. But then it's like that's not including threes, free throws, any of those things that as a hooper, like you said, when you figured it out in a certain offense, you're like, ooh, this is going to be nasty for me. Like, it's nasty, right? So what was the one thing Kobe taught you, told you that you still carry to this day? You know, rest in peace, Mamba, you know, that really keeps you going. So Kobe. The one thing he gave me, he like, to get the guys that aren't as good as you to follow you, you got to really teach them the way. Like, I didn't understand that at first. So, like, obviously, he always talked to me about just being a killer, being great. But what resonated with me the most was, like, getting your guys. You say my team wasn't really that good, right? Getting those guys to be able to get figure out where you are mentally. So... However weak the world thought they were, I was able to get them to believe they were just like me. Mm. Mm. Kobe would watch film with me, and like I didn't, I would ask questions like, "How, how do I get them to get the mindset that I have?" He's like, "You got to sit down and watch film with them. They got their mind has to be where yours is when you're watching film." Mm. Mm. And when he told me that, I was like, "We watched film in the playoffs that year. That's why I was serving. I I used to watch film to see where I can score." Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> he broke the to film that. down on seeing shit before it happened, setting back screens. I remember he sent me clips of Steph Curry, John Stockton, Larry Bird, and one other guy about back picks. And when I start setting back picks, it just started opening shit up for me. And I didn't even know it. You know, especially when guys is denying you and playing on top, I'm I'm wasting so much energy trying to get open. Yeah. It, we're down 2-0 against Bob. I mean, the, the Bulls. We were the number one seed, they were the eighth seed. We watched every possession from game one to game two. That shit took like five hours. Yep. On FaceTime. I had my video guy send it to his email. He broke it down. That was right before he started doing that detail shit. Okay. I feel like I was the, 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 the reason why he started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's seen it work so well. Yeah. After every game, he was he would, he would send that, the exact clip of how I did it, what he said, and it just opened it. The yeah. whole game. That's dope. It took, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. I didn't even waste energy no more. I wish I had that yeah. in the season. I would have yeah. averaged 37. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. Like, really like, yeah. I promise you. Yeah. And I didn't even know. Like I said, when I used to watch film, it was like, how can I find ways to score? Mm -hmm. He's like, you got to find ways to get your teammates to figure out how where your mind's at. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you'll just be eliminated. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to shed a tear in here, bro. Yeah, man, right, I heard the coma. That shit crazy. Well, I see you know we're rolling with you, man. We're excited for you. We want to see you come back 2023, 2024, get on yeah, somewhere, be able to do the things you could do. And good to see you healthy out here getting it, man. Give me like, two or three more years, And we got to get that rest the fuck out of here, still. I ain't trying to take nobody's shine. I just want to be, I just want an yeah, NBA jersey. That's yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. You're going to get it. Yeah, that rep, that rep. Yeah, thank you for having us at the Zika and we're getting that rep. We're going to go find it. I appreciate y'all coming. Like this. No. This is dope for the city. Like you should have seen how many people saying, "Hey, we're shot my cats is here." Mm -hmm. B Jennings came last year, so they, it's all love. Uh, Gilbert Arenas mm -hmm. is here. Hey, hold on, call well, Mr. Ben's here this year. Nico here. Oh, yeah, three people. She had three people. Yeah. I did, and, and I was glad that I was watch three people. Y'all podcast. <laughs> the, big, the big nigga that be with Gil here. Look, I don't have a name. The world know. watches the podcast. You're the best on Twitter. The world mm -hmm. sees that. Oh, I appreciate so you, bro. So it's like I'm giving y'all y'all flowers. Like oh, thank you, I know, B Jennings. Like y'all would be the number one podcaster. Yeah. 
But he's Mr. B now. He's like, Mr. Mr. B. He's Mr. B when I got the 90. When he get drunk. When I get drunk. I'm sober right now. I got water. I got water. I got water. This is Mr. B. This is Mr. B. You got Mr. B. Mr. B. is tonight. We appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Love, 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 Keller. The legend, you already know. Thank you. Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. We out. Rappers be rocking crowds, I read